Uh, welcome to the VBOX seasonal roundup. This is the third seasonal roundup in this series and the first one of the new year. My name's Lewis. I'm on the customer success team here at VBOX. I'm joined by my colleague Kat. Say hello, Kat. Hi, everyone. Yep, as you said, I'm Kat. I'm also part of the customer success team on the business side. Excellent. And we also have our colleague Kyle on the line as well, who's doing a few different things in the background for us. So say hello, Kyle. Hello, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Excellent. Let's go ahead and get started with today's session. So quick question here for everyone, whilst everyone's logging in, and that's what are you most looking forward to in 2024? Now, this could be uh, a personal uh, thing that you're looking forward to, or this could be work related. Absolutely fine. You can fire in both if you want. Uh, you can fire in more response. So let's get that word cloud building up nicely uh, and we'll find out what everyone's most looking forward to for the new year. Oh no, someone's given up on 2024 already. Oh no, <laughs> 2025. 2025. It's, it's such, such early <laughs> doors. It's not great, is it? Uh, what are you most looking forward to, Kat? Um, so I have a big event coming up at the end of August. It's my sister's wedding and I'm a maid of honor. So really Very excited nice. for that. Yeah. Definitely looking forward to that. Excellent. What about yourself, Lewis? So I've got a wedding in March as well. Not my own, one of my friends getting married uh, in Scotland. So very much looking forward to that. Uh, work related, got loads of really cool stuff to look forward to, uh, including quite a few things that we're going to be talking about in today's webinar. So product roadmap uh, and a few things as well. So make sure you do stay on till the end today uh, because we've got loads of really cool content uh, moving forward. Let's have a look at what you guys are all saying. So again, scan that QR code on the screen if you're still uh, haven't joined the session. It's going to be interactive. Let's get everyone involved today. The biggest word on here is holidays. Yeah. Uh, we've got wedding again, uh, another holiday there. Someone's turning 30, uh, summer holidays, uh, dog trading, Christmas. So a long way to, to go for that, <laughs> but someone's already looking forward to it. Uh, V-Box swag. Someone wants some V-Box swag. Okay, could could potentially uh, sort you out some VBOX swag there. Uh, right, what else have we got on here? Uh, more more money, six pack of beers. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the smaller ones. So. Ooh, getting healthy, definitely a New Year's resolution oh, for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. that I've definitely tried to set myself up with as well. Yeah. Excellent. So if you're still yet to join, please do go ahead, uh, get your phone out and scan that QR code. We, we've got a few different uh, bits of interactiveness today. So uh, we would like to get everyone who's on the call now to join. I'm going to go ahead and give everyone 10 seconds to respond to that and we'll crack on with the agenda for today. Excellent. Last few responses in there, everyone. And that polling oh. question is now closed. So go ahead and those results there and then we'll look at today's agenda cap great yeah thanks for your feedback everyone really interesting to see what everyone's looking forward to this year we have a packed session for you today so just a quick look at what we have in store we're going to kick it off by looking at some recent vbox product and feature updates so we're just going to start off with a quick recap of the september 2023 release just in case anyone missed that and then we'll move on to the newer features which we've released last month we're then going to have a look at some updates and top tips for our Microsoft 365 PowerPoint add-in. And as promised, a sneak peek into our roadmap of what our product development team is currently working on for the upcoming quarters. Our last item on the agenda is just a quick touch on customer stories before we move on to our Q&A portion at the end of the session. So that's just a dedicated session that just allows you to engage, to ask questions, and send in any suggestions as well, which you may have. So without further ado, let's move on to the first item of the agenda, which is the September 2023 release recap. Excellent. Let's go ahead and do that. Just before we get started as well, as I mentioned before, we've got the Q&A board open on VBOX. So if you have any kind of burning questions throughout today regarding this webinar or anything else VBOX related, pop them into the Q&A board. My colleague Kyle is uh, doing the moderation in the background so he'll push those questions and he's also labeling them with our uh, vbox labels feature so we'll be able to touch upon that in the q a uh, at the end of today's webinar excellent so let's go ahead and recap from the september release so some people might not be aware of these updates that we had back in september so i wanted to touch upon them quickly before we go into the more recent stuff 
if you logged into the platform before September, so uh, August time or before, you'd see that the VBOX session dashboard, it, looks a little, it looked a little bit different to how it does now on this screen. So we had two different views of how you could see the uh, dashboard, which was picture view or a list format as well. And essentially what we've done is we've merged those two uh, different styles together and it's really nice and handy to be able to find your session now and also do a lot of different search results in there now. So you can filter for the sessions, you can have a look for different session owners. So if something's been shared with you uh, by Abby, for this example, you'll be able to see all of Abby's sessions that have been shared with you. You can also have a look at the labeling feature as well. So weekly meetings, you can search for those and also sort uh, by different areas here, such as scheduled date. You can also uh, do a search for session ID as well, rather than the session name. So if you've got loads and loads of sessions within that list there, it's really, really easy to be able to find it now when before we didn't have that feature. Moving on to uh, results archiving, so resetting the session. So within your VBOX session itself, in the data area, you can actually reset the session now and everything gets saved in the session history from that previous one that you just ran, whatever it may be, meeting, event, or training session. Before you just had the clear data um, button there and everything would be removed forever, but now you can reset the session and have it saved within your history really good for those reoccurring events so quarterly town halls monthly trainings or just bi-weekly or weekly meetings with your team all within that one place within that same vbox session with that same id next on here it's not relevant for everyone uh, only to people with a pro plan but you can now actually add additional users yourself so before you had to do this by asking us uh, but now you can actually do this yourself within the dashboard. So it's a really nice update uh, to give you the freedom to be able to do that. Last but by no means least from the September release was the Teams improvements, especially the host control. So if you have a look on the right hand side of my screen now, if I just make that a little bit larger for everyone, you can now can do all of the host controls directly within that right hand panel within Teams. So you can open and close the polling questions, display the results in the leaderboard, and also control and, and, and manage that Q&A board as well. So beforehand, you might have had to uh, use two screens to uh, operate VBOX in the background on your dashboard on a second screen. Now you can do that all in Teams as a host, and the participant view remains the same. So that's quite a clear one and a really good update, which uh, I, I very much enjoy. And if you haven't had a look at that yet, I really do recommend doing so. Great. Well, moving on to our newest features and our most recent release, which took place on the 4th of December last year. Um, first item is improved participant experience. So we're always looking for ways to improve the user experience. Um, and this time it's been done by uh, bringing the features which were previously only available to the host screen on present view um, to the participants' devices now. So there's three new little features there. Um, the first one is real-time results. So real-time results will now also be reflected onto participant devices. So your participants can watch those results coming in live and in real time um, straight from their devices. Uh, the second thing is for any quiz questions um, or polls that you've got uh, a correct answer explanation for, that correct answer explanation will now also be reflected um, onto your participants' devices. So they'll be able to read that straight from their mobile phones or whichever device they're connecting from. Um, lastly is the countdown timer. So previously that was only shown on the present view on the host screen. Now that uh, countdown timer will be on your participants' devices um, so they can see how much time they have left to answer those polls. Okay, uh, the next new feature release uh, is a highly anticipated one. So we've had loads of people asking for this. So really excited that we can now uh, make this available to everyone. And that is countdown timer sounds. So there are currently seven different sounds you can choose from. Um, and that really just helps to energize those quieter parts of your session when your participants are just inputting uh, those results. Okay, so the next one is just a little update on one of our poll types, the numeric poll. Um, we've always shown the mean average of responses for the numeric poll, but now if you want to, you can also show the median and the mode average responses um, as well. 
So that's just shown on the image on the screen there. And finally, our last, but again, by no means least, um, newest feature is you are able to download all of the images from your data section of sessions that you have run just with one click of a button in one zip file, uh, whereas previously you had to do it individually for each one. Okay, so time for a little quiz. Um, just by way of a quick demonstration um, of some of these new features, we're just going to head over to VVox um, and just do a quick little quiz. Great, can see some questions coming in already. Excellent. Keep firing those questions in, everyone. Yeah, definitely. Um, just a little note. So the webinar platform we're using today does not allow um, audio sounds to be shared from our computer. So we are not able to demonstrate the countdown timer sounds as well as we would have liked. But our lovely colleague Kyle in the background, the king of tech, self-proclaimed title <laughs> just joking he's he is great um he's going to be playing some sounds the countdown timer sounds from his speaker just so you have an idea of what it sounds like um but if they are a little bit faint um or not quite as clear um that's just the reason why okay so let's just jump straight in if you haven't already um or if you've been disconnected you can just join the session at bvox.app using the nine digit session id currently on the screen or scan that qr code Okay, just going to jump straight in there. So the first one is just a little multiple choice question. How often does VVox run a seasonal roundup webinar? So is it once a month, once every three months, once every six months, or once a year? Um, I'm just going to get a countdown timer up there so we can just play that sound just for 10 seconds. There we go. Here we go. Just about it. <laughs> Seconds. And closing the poll. Great. Well, um, almost everyone uh, got that correct. So well done. It is once every three months. We do host these seasonal roundups once every quarter. So once every three months. Um, you can see that this question has a correct answer explanation. Um, so as well as it displaying on the uh, the present view now, you should also be able to see it on the device that you've connected with. Okay, great. Let's move on to the next one, which is uh, just a little numeric poll. And uh, that is how many years has VVox been giving everyone a voice in business, education, events, and television? So you've got a bit of a range thing to choose from between one and 60 years. Um, so again, I will just get that countdown timer up now. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of coming in. 60 years. So I'm <laughs> 60 years. We're not quite that old. <laughs> okay. Um, so the correct answer is 20. Um, so I, I've done a, a one year leeway on either side, just to give you um, a bit more of a chance. Um, but it is about 20 years that VBOX has been giving everyone a voice. Okay, last interactive poll for this part of the session. Um, this is, we just would like to hear from you. Um, so what is your favorite feature or features from the last two releases? Um, so the two releases we've just been talking about. Uh, this is an open text question. So I will put a little bit longer on the timer. We'll go with 30 seconds, just to give everyone a chance to send those answers in. Um, just while everyone is getting those in there, I'll, uh, I'll just quickly talk about if you ever wanted to mute the countdown timer sounds from the present view, all you have to do is click on this little speaker icon um, and it'll mute that for you there. Excellent. Loads of different things coming in here, right? Yeah. Sound timer, enhanced participant uh, view. That's definitely my favorite. The enhancements on the phone itself. You can do some really cool stuff on there yeah. now. Everything that's reflective on the present view, you can you can see it on your phones now pretty much. So uh, it's, it's uh, some really good updates there. Yeah, definitely. And uh, loads of different favorites, which is also good to see. Very nice, very nice. So let's uh, have a quick look at the leaderboard now. So I'll just show that. Have a look down on your devices now uh, and you'll see where you placed within that leaderboard. So well done. If you've got that gold medal, there's uh, three people that came first there. Quite a few people joined in, the, in fourth place there as well. So excellent. Well done to you if you got all of those uh, questions correct. 
Excellent. So moving on to the next part of our uh, webinar, and it's just regarding the Office 365 PowerPoint integration that we have. It's been around for, I want to say, just under a year now uh, in from from um, from beta and now available in the platform for for everyone. And um, I've had a few questions and a few different things that have pop up for best practice, tips, helpful hints and things like that throughout the past few months from customers. And they're quite reoccurring. So I wanted to highlight the three things uh, within this webinar now. So if you are an active user of our PowerPoint, uh, integration then this will help you if you're considering using this in the future as well then this will also be really helpful for you so the first thing on here is the slide master improvements that i wanted to highlight to everyone so for people that use us at the moment if you're aware when you added a question to your slide template that you already had sometimes the polling question would look a little bit odd it would look a bit funny when you first added that onto the slide as you can see now, the bars are quite small, the text is a little bit over the place. That's because the slide master uh, is set up on your PowerPoint presentation a certain way, the slide design, and VBOX pulled from that. Now, the workaround to that previously was you would have to fire up a new presentation, as I've just done here, and then you would have to get VBOX up on the side, add that question in again, and you can see on a blank presentation, you don't have that problem because it's pulling the slide master correctly, uh, pulling that layout correctly, essentially. You would have to grab the question slide and then you would have to take the result slide as well, copy it, and then head over to your old presentation, uh, the, the one that you're gonna be using for your training or your meeting, and then paste them in. And you can see that looks a lot clearer now, right? You can see it looks a lot nicer uh, and you can go ahead and delete those old ones. What I wanted to share with everyone is you no longer have to do that. So our development team have been working on uh, fixes and improvements for the PowerPoint add-in and I've tested it out myself in a few different slide designs and you no longer have that issue. You don't have to get it on a blank presentation. So if it's ever put you off in the past of using the PowerPoint integration where it looks a little bit funny on the slide, you won't have that issue anymore. Have a little play around in the test yourselves and you'll see exactly what I mean. Moving on to the second uh, tip for PowerPoints is dynamic results on the slides. So really, really useful. And a lot of people aren't aware of this. You can actually show real time results and dynamic results coming in. As you open the polling question, the bars will move on the PowerPoint presentation itself the same way that you would run a poll through the VBOX present view with showing real-time results on the bars move in real time as the polls open we never had that for the old powerpoint presentation for the old integration we now do and it's really really easy to be able to switch this on so if i head back over to vbox and then just show you the settings quickly head over to features and all you have to do is click display real-time results on for this webinar and for this VBOX session that you guys are currently in, we had display real-time results on already, uh, but you just need to switch that on because everything that reflects in the settings here, it reflects on the VBOX present view, but it also goes over to the PowerPoint uh, integration as well. So it's the exact same principle. If you wanted to have an automatic countdown timer on your questions, you can put that on and then the, you will have a 10 second countdown timer clock in the bottom right hand side of your PowerPoint presentation for when you run that poll. So I really do recommend people going ahead and giving that a test around. Really easy to turn those settings on uh, within VBOX and uh, use that. So yeah, definitely recommend turning your PowerPoints to life with that feature really nicely. Finally, it's using VBOX with the PowerPoint integration and with the Teams integration together. I've had a few questions in the past from people saying, Lewis, what's your favorite integration to use? Is it the PowerPoint uh, integration or is it Microsoft Teams integration? And I always say both. People don't realize sometimes that you, that you can use both of them together because the Teams integration is for your participants responding and also interacting. And the PowerPoint integration is for you, the host running those polling questions live. So I really do recommend using both of these together because it can turn your next Teams meeting or your next training session through Microsoft Teams 
really to life and uh, makes it really nice and interactive and engaging for all of your audience, whoever may be joining. I've got a short three to four minutes video on our YouTube channel, which shows you exactly how to do that from setup and also some best practice in there as well as to how to best utilize this within your meetings and events going forward. So I really do recommend you having a look at that after today. My colleague Kyle is gonna post the link to YouTube uh, in the Q&A announcements now. So have a look down at your app on your phones and you'll be able to see that link on there, which you can look at after today. So if you are new to PowerPoint and uh, not, not, not just the PowerPoint, sorry, the, to the VBOX integration, uh, then you can actually learn about it in the new beginner's guide to VBOX for PowerPoint. This is going to be every Tuesday at 3.45 p.m. And we're gonna highlight those four key points that you can see on the screen now. So really shows you the basics of how to get that and operate it and a little bit of best practice in there already as well. So we have the old the beginner's guide to VBOX, which is to show you how to utilize VBOX in the dashboard at 3 p.m. This is just going to follow on from that as well. So just a really nice one to join every single Tuesday. And my colleague Kyle can post the links out and information to that uh, in the VBOX Q&A board now. Great. Moving on to our VBOX roadmap. So as always, our product development team um, has been listening to your feedback and working really hard um, to develop um, new features and also plan some for the VBOX roadmap. Um, just before we have a look into that, uh, just a little small a disclaimer. Um, so the following items, they are planned and they are being designed and investigated. But just to make a little note that they currently have no fixed release date on the roadmap. But we do expect to see uh, more on these throughout this year. Okay, so starting off with the short term, so uh, new features coming out hopefully in the spring and summer of this year. Um, another highly anticipated one, fastest finger first for quizzes. Yes. So yeah, really excited. <laughs> um, and then also uh, looking at some improvements to our polling list and poll creation UI. Um, some changes to our integrations as well, so our Teams and PowerPoint integrations. Um, we'll be looking at introducing poll creation directly from those integrations. So this is currently available in our Teams one, um, but we'll be looking at introducing it to our PowerPoint too. Um, and then just another one for PowerPoint is some improvements to the slide design and also to the layout. Looking a little bit further ahead, so autumn or winter of 2024, um, we'll be looking at introdu introducing some self-paced quiz leaderboards Currently, these leaderboards are only available for um, live polls. So we'll be looking at introducing them to self-paced quizzes. Um, there'll also be some updates to our polls, so poll-specific options, um, and also some display alternatives for poll results. Um, as well as poll type, mix and match, to be honest, not too sure what that entails, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're just excited to find out um, what that is, uh, as hopefully you are. Um, we'll also be looking at some improvements to some of our poll types, so our, to our rating poll, as well as increasing the limits for our numeric polls. So at the moment, the range is 1 to 200, um, but we'll be looking at making that bigger. Um, as well as our multiple choice poll, so we'll be looking at introducing some images as multiple choice options. And then finally, predefined Q&A tags for participants to assign tags themselves. Mm -hmm. Some really, really cool stuff on there, right? What's yeah. your, what would you say your favorite thing is that we're you're looking Ooh. forward to? Yeah. Um, I think it would have to be the fastest finger first. Um, I, I really think it's going to just give that extra edge and extra bit of excitement when it comes to quizzes and like friendly competitions. Yeah. So yeah, definitely a good one. What about you, Lewis? Very nice. Yeah, I think I'm the same as well with the fastest finger, just yeah. being able to di differentiate between those two winners or potentially people with a tie break people have asked for it our customers yeah. have asked for it for a long time uh, and it's going to be a really cool one to to come in so really really looking forward to that i'm also looking forward to the participants uh, the q a labels for participants because anyone that isn't aware at the moment you can only assign labels create labels and assign them as a host but doing it as a participant and having those predefined ones will completely change uh, the Q&A session and make it a lot more uh, categorized and, and entertaining and, and good for the, the audience really. Yeah, so definitely. 
definitely. Definitely. Some really cool stuff to look forward to. So hopefully everyone is uh, looking forward to those potential updates as well coming forward. But what do you think of the roadmap? So uh, put your thoughts and comments into the VBOX Q&A board now. Do you like what's coming? What's your favourite um, What's your favourite uh, update that's potentially coming in the future? And also, is there anything that you would like to see within the platform that you didn't see within that roadmap? Put your thoughts and your comments within the Q&A board now. Make sure you like those comments uh, from others as well, because we'll see the most liked one uh, sit at the top. And we just want to see what resonates with you guys most and what's actually going to uh, improve your meetings, uh, events and classes uh, moving forward. Next section is the workplace story section. So a very brief one here. And I just wanted to talk about all of the different uh, workplace stories and customer stories that we have on our website. So Kyle, if you could go ahead and post the link out to everyone on the Q&A board, the uh, link on our website to be able to check out those stories. We're always looking for more. So one thing that I wanted to highlight for today, uh, quite, quite a key important part uh, of today's webinar, is we would like to start sharing more stories and get more customer-based um, activity on our website. Um, so if you are looking to share, if you're free and open to be able to do that, uh, we've got a question in our survey at the end of today, uh, right at the end there, if you're willing to share an experience with us, your last one or something that's coming in the future, how VBOX has impacted you and your business uh, and your team as well, uh, we'd really like to hear from you. So once that survey does go live in just a moment's time, uh, can you go ahead and uh, fill in that question near the end if you're happy to do so and also put your email in there as well so we can contact you. Great, so while you're just uh, filling out that survey, it's just a little reminder that our next seasonal roundup webinar is on Thursday, the 11th of April, same time as today, 3 p.m. UK time. Uh, we hope you've seen that these sessions really are useful. Um, we go through, uh, you know, some of our newest feature and product um, updates and releases, um, as well as just talk about all things VVOX, um, including, you know, looking at the roadmap and what's coming up. Um, so highly recommend you join us for our next seasonal roundup. Excellent. Yeah, looking forward to that one as well. And I forgot to mention as well within that survey, guys, if uh, it is just a bit of feedback in regards to the webinar today. So just get, rate it on one to five stars. Uh, be nice to us, please. Uh, and then from there, you can say what you liked about the session. So what should we continue doing and what would you like to see in the future as well? So as Kat just mentioned, the next one is in about uh, three months time. So every quarter and we'll go ahead and take all of your feedback on board and make sure these sessions are really relevant and useful to everyone that's joining because uh, we want to make sure uh, you know, everyone on the call is, is enjoying these uh, sessions. Excellent. I think that comes to the end yeah. of all of the things that we had on the agenda to, to discuss today. Let's go ahead and jump over to the VBOX Q&A board and we can have a look at those questions and comments that have been coming in throughout. So Kyle has very handily sorted out these for us so we can actually go ahead and filter between these four different labels that we have. So let's have a look at general questions first. And then we're going to look at things within the product release and product roadmap. Cool. So we've got quite a few general questions. Uh, so I think we'll spend, you know, two to three minutes on all the questions. We'll read from the top uh, down and then we'll go on to another category, uh, another label. So we can have a look at different types of questions and comments that have come in. Do be sure to like those questions that you feel are relevant for you as well. Excellent, Kat. So here we go. Yep. Uh, here's that first one on there. So in the dashboard, can we have the ability to create uh, to create folders to organize uh, sessions? So that's a really good question. So currently at the moment, you're, you're not able to create folders per se, but you can create labels. So we have the labeling feature to do just that, to be able to organize all of those sessions. If you had a look at the uh, video that I had on one of the previous slides, and we'll get these out to you in the recording out so you can uh, re-watch this, but you can actually do different labels for uh, team meetings or if you've got a particular training session. We've seen it in the past with other customers. They'll have all of their different training sessions labeled so they can find them easier. Um, that's, that's the kind of 
organizational feature that we have currently. So it's not necessarily folders, that's not the word for it, but we call them labels. And that's how you can organize all of your sessions within the dashboard. Cool, next question. So can settings be changed on the fly when the session has started and is active? So you can, you can do this, but you wouldn't be able to do it from the present view. So you can always pop back into your settings, um, even if the session has started and, and make changes, um, but you wouldn't be able to do it from the present view, um, if that makes sense. I'm not sure if you have anything. Yeah, no, no, yeah. that's absolutely right. So yeah, you won't be able to change any settings from this screen that we're on yeah. now, uh, but you can do things on the fly. So if you had, uh, if you were sharing your screen with the present view, if you had the second monitor, uh, this is how I normally operate as well and how we're doing it today. So we have that second monitor and we can actually go into our settings on there and change things on the fly. Um, just for an example of things that you can do on the fly is you can turn dynamic results on and off, the real time results. So if you didn't want to show those, if you wanted to show the results to a particular polling question, but then there was something a little bit more sensitive, you had a sensitive topic a little bit later down the line where you didn't want to display the results to the audience, you can actually turn that off during your session uh, amongst other things. The Q&A board, you can switch that on and off whilst you're live. Yes, the answer to your question is, there's lots of things you can do on the fly, uh, but as Kat mentions, uh, not through the present view. Yeah. Okay, next one. Let's have a look. So, is there tutorial videos I can watch? Do you provide trading? Uh, really good question. So, there are lots of uh, tutorial videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, my colleague Kyle will uh, post that out to you guys, uh, and we'll also get some really nice, useful, relevant material to everyone who's joined. Uh, after today, but the YouTube channel, just go onto there, search for VBOX. We have tons and tons of useful training, uh, resources, best practice, and also other webinars like this one. So this is going to be on the YouTube channel uh, after today as well. So lots of different things on there. Um, and uh, yeah, you can go ahead on our help site as well with loads of uh, really cool resources on there as well. Yeah, definitely a really comprehensive help site with loads of step-by-step -step guides and articles. So yeah, definitely one to head over and have a look at. Okay. Excellent, so I'll take this next one. Can the result and poll slide be separated so that participants won't see the, the poll result while observers can? Um, you can't. Um, they, they do sort of go hand in hand. Once you close your poll, you stop your poll, the results will be displayed. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's it. For anyone that's not aware, I believe this is, yes, referring to the uh, PowerPoint add in. Uh, so, this question may have come earlier. So, those two slides need to stay together when you create that question you have the question slide and the results slide these two need to stay together for the polling functionality within the add-in to operate correctly and work essentially so you have to keep those two together and that's quite an important point uh, and if you wanted to find out more about the powerpoint integration and the add-in there uh, there was that session that i mentioned earlier every tuesday 3 45 so you'd be able to dive into a little bit more powerpoint focused things then Right. We do one more of these and then we can jump over to the other category of questions. So does the countdown timer sound need to be set before the session is started for the sound to work? Did you want to take this one, Kat? Yeah, sure. Um, so the countdown timer sound does need to be switched on um, from the settings menu. So you would go to settings, features, and then there's a little toggle um, for the countdown timer uh, sound. Um, and there's a little drop down where you can choose from, you know, one of the seven sounds available. Um, as we did discuss briefly earlier, you can do this on the fly. So, you know, once your session has already started, you can always pop back into settings to do that. Um, but again, you can't turn it on from the present view. Yeah, that's a good point as well. And it depends how you're using the countdown timer sound. So if you're at an in-person face-to-face event or meeting, then just make sure that sound is playing from your external speakers. But if you're on an online meeting, so something through Teams or what we're doing today, make sure you share your computer sounds when you run the polling question. A really key point because the audience won't be able to hear it unless you share your computer sounds when you share your screen as well. So that's quite a key important point uh, to, to, to add to that. Yeah. Cool. Should we have a look at the other uh, bits and pieces now? So if yeah. we take that filter off and then we'll head over to uh, product release. 
Here we go. Only one question in oh. there, so let's have a look at that. So when is the next feature update to VBOX? So good question. So the next update, I believe it should be uh, the end of Feb or March. Not 100% sure yeah. uh, on that one there, but I'll find out exactly when the next feature release will be for everyone. Uh, obviously, we had uh, some updates in the December and then the one before that was the September release. So uh, very shortly uh, in, the, in, the, in the months to come. Definitely. Okay. Where should we head to next? Uh, let's go over to product roadmap. Product roadmap. Excellent. A few questions in here. Let's go ahead and look at that top one. So looking forward to the images as multiple choice options, we have colleagues asking to be able to do this. Oh, good. That's a comment. So thank you very much for the feedback. Excellent. Yeah, yeah really good point there. And it's another, yeah. another one that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, so having yeah. the ability to put pictures on those different options there, it's going to be a really nice visual one, especially if you're using the present view uh, when you're running your polling questions and sharing your screen that way. Uh, it's going to be really nice and visually pleasing for the audience. So it's definitely a very cool update we're both looking forward to as well. Oh. Will you be using AI for more features? Um, good question. I don't believe there's any plans in the near future to be using AI for more features. Uh, if anyone isn't aware, you have the AI quizzing feature currently. So you can pop a category or a subject within the AI uh, asking area and it spits out for you uh, one to five questions with four uh, options in there and one correct answer. So really good for building a quiz uh, quickly uh, and, and everyone, um, people on the pay plans have access to that currently. So definitely. More okay. AI updates as well. No, again, again, there's a, I think AI is a really hot topic at the moment. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we've got the, as I just mentioned, the quizzing stuff in the platform already, but nothing in the near future uh, regarding AI, but doesn't mean that something could come uh, in the future. So uh, if that's something that people are interested in, uh, you know, do, do feedback back to us, because we're always looking for feedback on the platform uh, and, and what everyone is, is kind of after and what's going to be useful to you. I think there are a few updates to our AI quiz generator um, in the works, but obviously not quite on the roadmap yet. Um, but there are discussions of possibly um, varying the uh, poll types that AI that our AI quiz generator can use, because at the moment you can only generate multiple choice questions um, and you can only generate five at a time. So we're looking at increasing that, but you know, no plans for any release about that in the near future. Excellent. Just had a look at this one here. So yeah. just to read it out for everyone, great that you can now use real time results in PowerPoint. However, it would be even better if you could choose which slides you want to do this on rather than it needing to be for all of them. Yeah, really, really good point there. And we can take this feedback on, uh, you know, at the moment, the settings through the dashboard does reflect on the present view and the PowerPoint add in. So it's just a nice way to have that mirrored uh, kind of settings for both. I haven't tried this myself, but potentially, as we spoke to before, doing things on the fly, so having it on a separate uh, device and turning the real-time results off as you're live in your presentation, give that a go. I'm, I'm not 100% sure if it will work if it uh, doesn't show it on the on the fly afterwards if you're in full slideshow mode, but give it a go, uh, and I will definitely be doing so after this today as well, because I'll learn something new. Oh. Excellent. Let's go ahead and look at general comments and then we'll go back to, here we go. There's, there's only a few things on here. So excited for it all uh, and US morning. Uh, not sure what that's referring oh, yeah. to. Did we say good afternoon? Oh, good morning. Good oh, morning no. US. Apologies. <laughs> yeah, of course. We get sometimes the people joining from all over the place. Yeah. So yes, good morning to those that are joining in the US. Good evening to anyone in Australia. And exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we need to do the whole we thing do, next yeah. time. Oh, we'll work on it. We'll work on it, guys. <laughs> Right, let's head back over to the general questions. We'll wrap up. We've got five minutes left, so we'll try and get through as many questions as we can. Let's let, have a look at that top one. For the Teams integration, I often need to act as both host and participant. Can I get another tab that lets me answer polls as a participant? Uh, really, really good question there. And to that point, after the update, for anyone that's not aware, when you're adding VBOX into your Teams meeting, uh, your Teams event, you uh, will only have the host controls within that side panel. Now, my recommendation there is if you need to act as a participant as well, then I would log in on your phone. So 
log into VBOX, uh, VBOX.app or scan a QR code for your particular session, log in on your phone as a participant, and then you can do all the host controls through the VBOX, um, through the Teams integration with that host panel on the right hand side. So there's that workaround uh, for you, uh, just to have it on your phone as the side. And I always say it's best practice, best practice to do that anyway, to have the participant view on the side so you can see how the participant, it, their, their view looks essentially. Cool, next one. Uh, so for accessibility, it would be good to be able to make the text bigger when presenting, i.e. the question, the answer options, and the correct answer explanation. These can be quite small when presenting in a large lecture, lecture theater. Yeah, totally hear you. Um, and that's great feedback. Uh, we will pass that on to our feedback um, team. Um, and then hopefully we'll have some updates for you in the future. Um, sure. But we'll definitely pass that on to our feedback team because at the moment there is no option to change the text size. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Any any kind of feedback that you have to ask, yeah. anything that's going to make your life easier when you're running your classes um, or your meetings, yeah. go ahead and pop that in the Q&A board. We'll leave this Q&A board open afterwards as well. So if you do have any kind of feedback you want us to pass on to our development team that is going to make your sessions easier and better and uh, cleaner, uh, just go ahead and pop that in there and we'll be sure to pass that feedback onto our team. No problem. Definitely. And the more feedback we get that is sort of like of the same kind, it pushes it up on the roadmap as well. Exactly. So yeah, definitely keep them coming in. Exactly that. Great. Excellent. Uh, this next one here, is there a way to section off one session into different groups for a conference? If there is a quiz in the middle, it often means question one on the quiz is actually question 10 on VBOX. Yeah, good point. So there's there's no real way to section it off into different groups if you're using it at a conference. As you mentioned there, your first question of the quiz uh, will show as question 10 if you've had nine more polls before that uh, area there. What you can do is you can mix it up a little bit if that's a bit frustrating and you can have a completely different VBOX session for the quiz. So the only downside to that is you're going to have to get everyone to log in and scan a new QR code and make sure they go back into the other one uh, afterwards. But with some nice communication and, uh, and the presenter verbally communicating that, you know, your host that's on stage um, or that's online, if it's a Teams webinar or, or virtual, just get them to verbally communicate that and make it really clear that this is just for the quiz. You've got a new separate QR code just for the quiz, uh, and then you can hop back into uh, the other one. Uh, after that but at the moment no there's no way to kind of section off sections within uh, a, a particular session uh, but definitely one to look at in the future for feedback and uh, yeah. development okay in the dashboard is it possible to select multiple sessions and make or change settings to the group um so at the moment you would have to change the settings in each session you would go into each session's settings and, be, and update each one individually mm -hmm. um but again that's really good feedback which we can we can pass on to our feedback development team. yeah at the moment it's uh it's, it's an all or nothing thing you can do yeah. you can do one at a time individual and change the settings in there or you can do it at an admin level so if you have admin privileges within your account uh, some of you guys that are part of big orgs or institutions yeah. might not have the ability to do this but essentially you can change these settings for all sessions going forward, the default sessions for your organization. So if you wanted to have real-time results displayed and the Q&A board off for all sessions, you can do that within your admin view. Uh, but again, you need to have the full privileges for that. So um, yeah, definitely one to consider for, for future. Right, we'll take one more question. Thank yeah. you very much for everyone for joining. I know we're at time now, so we'll call this the last question uh, and we will try to send out a nice useful bit of content afterwards to everyone that's registered for these ones that we didn't answer. So we'll get a little spreadsheet going and try and get absolutely everything answered. Can VBOX question numbers be customized? I want to use numbering to help me know which slide or presentation the question relates to. Um, yeah so powerpoint yeah so regarding to powerpoint uh, i want to use numbering to help me know which slide or presentation so the the numbers can't be customized currently i hope i'm reading that correctly the the, the numbers on there can't be customized um if you're adding a polling question they will just be in the set order of numbers on there and um, that isn't a feature that we have currently is there anything you want to add to that cat 
Uh, no, I think that's no. about it. I'm not sure I'm 100% understanding. Yeah, I, I think we can <laughs> we can look at this question afterwards. Yeah. And if, it, if you wanted to get um, on a call to, to discuss this a little bit further so we can understand it a bit better, um, just email us into support at bvox.com. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, if you could put that on the announcements uh, now, that'd be really useful. Uh, but we can dig into that one a little bit further if need be. Excellent. I think we're going to end it there now, guys. So uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, and a uh, re really good session. Hopefully uh, it was a really useful one to you. Do feel free to pop in the um, more updates and more things that you'd like to see on the platform in the Q&A board, and please do make sure to fill in that survey for us as well. So go ahead and fill in that survey. We would love to hear from you in regards to that. Definitely. Well, thank you all again, and thank you, Kyle, in the background. You're a lifesaver. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> and, and you. Uh, yeah, speak to you all soon. Thanks everyone. Take Bye. care now. Bye. Bye.